Quebec's politicians have to be the biggest hypocrites out there. According to a new study completed by App Eco, besides counting on Western Canada for billions in transfer payments, that province's economy also benefits significantly from Alberta's oil sands. Details of the report outline that between 2014 and 15, 371 companies in Quebec accounted for 1.2 billion in contracts and employed 16,200 people in jobs related to the industry. The industry also accounts for 1.25 billion of Quebec's GDP and 215 million in government revenues. So not only is Quebec's government benefiting from interprovincial welfare, but they're also double dipping. Let me remind you of what their politicians think of the oil and gas industry. Here's Mayor of Montreal, Denis Coderre, who imports conflict oil from the Middle East and okay dumping the equivalent of 3,200 Olympic-sized swimming pools of sewage into the St. Lawrence River, saying that the Energy East pipeline is too risky. Yeah, um, I don't think dumping sewage in a river is really the best example of environmental stewardship. Quebec's hypocritical Minister of Energy, Pierre Arcand, also says he wants confidence in the National Energy Board restored before relaunching the evaluation of the Energy East pipeline. But no worries, the government will keep taking that sweet, sweet oil money, no problem. What's more is the National Energy Board partly decides the fate of our pipelines, and you might recall that the Liberals have stacked it with anti-oil activists. So restoring confidence must just mean that he wants his friends making all of the decisions, right? This government doesn't even speak for the people of their own province, who in a recent poll done by Ledger, two out of three responded that they prefer Western Canadian oil imports. And the province is actually divided on oil exploration in Quebec at around 56% in favour. Oh, and did I mention that they have very strict regulations and put a ban on oil and gas drilling at one point? No problem though. The government will keep on importing foreign oil. If it's not happening in their own province, it's not happening at all, right? So can these politicians just stop it with the nonsense with this social license restoring confidence garbage? According to Global Energy Pulse, 68% of Canadians want Canadian oil. And in case you're keeping track like I am, Rachel Notley's carbon tax and 100 megaton cap on emissions still hasn't gotten a single pipeline built. There's just no such thing as a magical pass to get these projects off the ground. And even if there was, we'd have it judging by those stats. Denis Coderre says building pipelines is too risky. But what's really risky is shipping more oil by rail, which is going to happen if we don't get shovels in the ground immediately. According to statistics, there's going to be a 31% increase in global energy demand, with oil accounting for 27% of that, and the Canadian oil sands playing a significant role where production continues to increase. We don't have any new pipelines completed to meet that capacity. So that means more shipments by rail, and you'd think the mayor of Montreal and the provincial government would be the first to sign on to getting these projects built. Considering the Lac Megantique rail disaster that happened right in their province and took the lives of 47 people after a train carrying Bach and crude derailed and exploded. And that's the problem with transporting oil by rail. There's a serious risk of hydrocarbons igniting when there's a crash, which can be absolutely devastating. But never mind all of that. Never mind the benefits that this province reaps from Canada's oil and gas industry, safety or potentially saving lives. Virtue signaling over the environment by stalling projects is just far more important to these politicians. Because that's all it is. If they really meant what they said, they'd stop using oil altogether. For the Rebel.media, I'm Holly Nicholas. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss the other side of the story in Canadian news.